Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to Game and Friday. It comes around again. It does, it does. Otherwise known as VR News for Friday, February 3rd, 2017. Start with the first news story. This is about the social VR application called Rec Room. They have raised $5 million in an effort to remain a free application. So they had investors, quite a few, already lined up, coughed up the money. With the $5 million, they can go on for at least a set amount of time before they have to worry about where the next dollar is going to be coming from. Now, it's a Seattle-based VR studio. These guys are called Against Gravity. And they launched just this last summer. And apparently what has set them apart, and some of you would know better than me, uh, by my own admission, I'm not much of a social VR guy, but apparently they describe it on Road to VR as kind of a YMCA experience, a place you can hang out with others, check out activities, there's little games and things that you can play in the VR space, and stuff like chest bumping, fist bumping, that kind of stuff. Avatar-wise, it doesn't necessarily carry over to the avatar. For example, there's lots of emotes and emojis that you can use. Not all of them translate to your on-screen avatar, so you're not going to necessarily see them smile or cry or do any of that stuff. They're expressed emojis a lot of times or graphical pop-ups that come up. But for those interested, there it is. It is available on Steam and the Oculus Store, so both Vive and Oculus Rift. Now this next update is a bit of a head scratcher and the reason I say that is one of the things that drives most of us a little nuts is this tendency of people to lump virtual reality in with 3D TV as if somehow they're related and because 3D TV failed therefore virtual reality will fail and it personally kind of drives me to distraction but not at all. Completely separate things. I do feel that 3D TV was mostly a fad. Then comes this curious update, guys. This is the 4.0 PlayStation update. And it's an update for PlayStation VR owners specifically. At least one component of it is that effectively turns your... PlayStation VR into a 3D TV viewer. So you do it through a newly added cinema style mode. You can't share that space with others, but you can use that to play 3D Blu-rays in stereoscopic 3D. So if you had some of those a long since retired TV, this is a way to be able to view those. Also, there were games released, uh, Uncharted, for example, on the PlayStation 3 that offered a 3D stereoscopic mode as well. A lot of people didn't know about that. A lot of people who did never tried it. So this, you know, if you've got those games around, you can go back and check some of that back catalog with the 3D functionality. Not really my thing, not something I'm really interested in. And personally, a lot of the theater movies that I go to, I don't really enjoy the 3D glasses, Just, which is strange. I'm okay with an HMD, but whatever the reason, I'm okay without it. Let's just put it that way. All right. Rick and Morty co-creators, Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon, they are going to be delivering the keynote at the VR LA Expo for 2017. Now, this is going to take place at the Los Angeles Convention Center. It's basically a two-day event, April 14th and the 15th, and organizers are stating that this is going to be the biggest and best virtual reality conference yet, and they probably say that almost every year, but given where we are in this kind of newly created history of virtual reality space that we've been building over the last year, it's probably going to take on an added significance because this one is coming at a time when there's actually commercial HMDs available. Last year's was only the Gear VR and some other off-the-shelf limited mobility products that were available. Now this next link kind of ties in, I say link rather than news piece, it's an update from Upload VR, and it lists 
pretty much, it's super comprehensive, probably about five pages in total, and it lists every single VR, or even if it's a game event or conference, if it has a VR component, it's listed here. You can check out the link, see what's closest to you if there's one that you're planning on attending. I'll cover a few, but like I said, it's a huge list and would take way too long to go over. Just some of the ones that stood out for me include uh, Virtual Reality Evolution. This one is February the 16th, London, England. Virtuality, February 24th to 26th in Paris. We've got the Virtual Reality Developers Conference. So any of you, and I know there's a couple of you that are developers that watch the news pieces on this channel. That will be in San Francisco. So you got the Bay Area, California. That is, again, the Virtual Reality Developers Conference, February 27th and 28th. Silicon Valley VR Expo, that one in San Jose in the Convention Center, March 29th to 31st. And then finally, another one, man, busy in the LA uh, Convention Center for VR. This one is Virtual Reality LA, VR LA to be specific, April 14th to 15th. So if you're in Europe, Asia, I, I did see some there as well. Check out the link in the description below. You can see the events that are going to be near you. Now, in terms of updates, we talked about the PlayStation 1. Hasn't been a really big HTC Vive update to speak about, but there is finally an update for the Oculus Rift dealing specifically with the tracking issues. I'm going to probably put this up here on a picture, but just going to skim through some of these. So... The biggest one is improved visibility of Guardian system boundaries with better hand animations. Definitely been a complaint of mine as well. What I love about the HTC Vive's chaperone system, but keep in mind they've had months more, you know, tweaking this. What I love about it is how you can go from completely almost imperceptible that it's even there, basically just a line on the ground like a square rectangle that lights up only as you approach the border to essentially full-on walls. With the Rift, there weren't near as many options. So this is obviously to improve that aspect there. They've also improved room scale and 360 degree support. They're still calling it experimental. They're probably going to study the fallout if there is any for this. In other words, if people complain, tweak it further, etc. They've also fixed tracking issues with touch controllers 1, 2, and 3 plus. So not just the multiple sensor arrangement. Even 1 and 2 have been improved with this. The Guardian system as a whole, Oculus Rift and Touch setup. And that was actually something I wasn't aware of. One of you pointed that out to me probably about a month ago now, three weeks ago, I didn't realize you could carry over the settings from Oculus Home into your Steam VR session. I found Steam VR set up for, for Oculus Touch rather was a lot more convoluted than it needed to be. So definitely being able to transfer it over assisted that tremendously after once I was aware of it. But apparently now they have improved the Guardian system and its reliability, its tracking, stability, uh, ease of use, pretty much all angles they've addressed. And like I said, the touch setup, they've also made searching in the uh, Oculus Store and Oculus Library more straightforward and streamlined it. Again, another thing that has never been as smooth as you would hope it was. And Again, something that HTC Vive has had longer to work on and has had working pretty smooth for the most part. This next story, probably the most interesting of all because it's a clear nod to 4K and beyond in virtual reality. Now, me personally, I'm okay with the first gen stuff. Let's stick with that for a while. Let's fix what we need to fix and let's get some damn games out there to play but what this technology is, is basically new LCD technology called blue phasing. And what this allows, in a nutshell, is to not have to use subpixels. So they're basically able to create the colors that they need without subpixels. So density massively increased. 
end result, just super layman's terms, would be way less screen door effect. Not just at 1080p, but 4K and beyond, even more than under existing LCD technology. It's apparently just exponentially improved under this with a resolution density of 1500 pixels per inch. So that's huge, plus uses less power. All right, guys, that is it for the Friday VR news. Hope you guys have a kick-ass weekend. We are off to do some gaming. Chat with you tomorrow. Cheers, guys.